Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Tech Guys Who Invest, where we help you invest wisely and safely. If you enjoy this show, we would love it if you would help us meet our goal of increasing our number of reviews so we can reach more people to help them escape the rat race. It's easy to do. Just give us a five-star rating on, on your Apple player or give us a good review on whatever podcast player you're listening to the show on. We really appreciate your help. So, Kevin, how's your week going? The week's going well. So, recently, I maxed out my self-directed IRA because they had extended it to to May, but I actually was able to get that last contribution in uh, on April 1st. So, I was happy about that. So, for those of you that don't know, you don't have to stop contributing to your, I think 401k applies to, but I know for a certain self-directed IRA, you can contribute that following year up until the tax day. So if it was normal, no pandemic or anything, it would have been April 15th. So for 2020, I could have contributed money to that account till April 15th, 2021, but it got extended. So that deadline got extended as well. And I recently learned that there's a way that you can add more than this, the, the maximum 6,000 to your self-directed IRA. Oh, really? And I confirmed this with one of the uh, self-directed IRA experts in my network. You can roll over what you have in your 401k into your self-directed IRA and it doesn't count towards your contribution. So nice. if I've put, let's say 5,000 in, I'd only have 1,000 left for the year. If I had 10,000 in my 401k that I wanted to roll over, I could absolutely do that. And it would be at no penalty to me, uh, no maximum contribution limit. The only thing is you have to have a 401k custodian at your employer that allows you to do an active withdrawal. Okay. So that is probably a key thing. Or if you were like to get a new job or something, then you end that 401k and then roll it over to a self-directed IRA. But an active withdrawal is a possibility. And that's not just a little pro tip for you for the day. That's pretty awesome, man. And congrats on getting that done. I mean, that that's really cool. I love how you're just continuing to chip away at things and and build that build that up, man. That's that's awesome. Yeah. So if you're listening to this, I got money to lend. Let me know. I'm more than happy to lend out a few thousand dollars and obviously secured. I wouldn't do an unsecured loan. Just couldn't do it. Not even if, you know, 15%, 20% interest. I just, ah, it's too risky for me. I don't want to lose that money. Um, but yeah, if you listen to this, I'm more than happy to be continue originating notes in my self-directed IRA. Right on, man. Uh, that's what, awesome. What's going on with you, Adam? Well, yeah, just uh, as we were getting ready to start recording here, I, I got a text from a loan officer I'm actually going through a refi on one of my rental properties. So I'm pretty excited about that. You know, it's probably, it's probably overdue. Honestly. Um, I received a statement in, in the mail, they just changed servicers. You know how sometimes that'll happen where mm -hmm. they'll just kind of package your loan up with some others and sell it to a different servicer. What? Uh, <laughs> it's <kinda laughs> crazy. Those note guys, but, um, that happened and I got my new statement and maybe because it was different and I wasn't used to seeing it, that interest rate I'm paying really stood out to me. And while it used to be not a bad rate, it's, it's high compared to what you can get now. Right. So I said, what, what am I waiting for? You know, let's get this going. Start, started the refi process. So you know how that is like it's a pain in the butt to get all those documents together and submit and resubmit and all of that but um i've gotten pretty organized about keeping most of that stuff relatively accessible as real estate guys we go through this kind of thing periodically so uh, i don't have it too far from me and i've been able to get through the beginning part of the application quicker than I have in the past because of that. But it's exciting, even though that's parts right. of pain, because I'm cool. going to be lowering my monthly payment, bro. It's a way to increase your cash flow is to lower your costs, right? Answered the question that I was real. I was just about to ask that. So we're yeah. on the same wavelength. Uh, you basically are considering the price of money. So the interest rate that you're yeah. being charged, that's the price of your money. And that monthly payment is incorporated in that. So if you, you know, your rent if you have that spread there, that's where your cash flow comes in. So that's awesome, man. Congrats. Right on. Thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate it. And you know, we're always trying to look for ways to add a add an income stream or increase our cash flow in some way. And 
right now it's really difficult in the real estate market to find deals that cash flow. It, I mean, whether you're talking about single family or you're talking about multifamily, it's very difficult because the market's on fire. People just are, keeps going up. Everything oh keeps my going gosh. up. It's ridiculous the way people are overpaying on stuff. Uh, I think there are a lot of reasons for that, but you know, looking for ways to increase the cash flow, this is one of them. So, uh, yeah, notes are the same way. Things are steadily being higher priced, and mm -hmm. it's just, man, what what's going on here? And I think that there's there's still a case to be made going direct to seller if you can find those hidden gems through things like public records or through networking, maybe even off of Craigslist, you find somebody that's where the motivated seller comes in. That's where the negotiation is going to be. You're not going to pay full price. Chances are, if you can do the negotiation the right way. So that's just a, another pro tip. Ooh, we're well, that's, all about pro tips today. No, man. You know, that's part of the grind, right? Like that's, that's part of the grind and it, it's not easy and it, it takes time. And, and so to do that, to, find those hidden gems to be working on contacting people. And you're working a lot to do this. And for those of us who have day jobs and are doing this as a side hustle, uh, you can find yourself working a lot of hours and eventually you can start to get burned out if, if you're yeah. not maintaining that sustainable pace. Right. So that's what we wanted to talk about today is burnout. What is Battling. that? What, what, what do you do about it? <laughs> Sometimes you, it's funny because burnout, it's not something you recognize till you're, you're really burnt out. Right. At least in my opinion, you, you start to like, there's signs of it for me. I get irritable or I get frustrated that I'm not doing enough, even though I've done a bunch of stuff or I've had a good day. But the first thing at, at the end of the day that I think about is I didn't do enough. I didn't, whatever it might be. I didn't analyze this note. I didn't read anything pertaining to note investing or, or marketing. And then that sees itself and cascades this whole thought process of ru it ruins my day long story yeah. short it ruins my day and it, it's not something that's pleasant and i understand you know for my girlfriend it's not pleasant to be around either because you know we could have had this amazing day just hanging out and then the next thing you know a, a switch hits i'm like i didn't do anything all day and then i get frustrated and then that enough of those then i started to realize i guess maybe i am burnt out <laughs> yeah man it's kind of interesting we're talking about this because you and i uh expressed to each other that we're both feeling a bit of it you yeah. know and um i think we've both been working really hard for a long time and eventually it just sort of catches up with you and you have to at that point you have to just sort of step back give yourself the recovery you need because recovery is really important i think that's what a lot of high achievers put on the back burner. And when they get out of balance, I think that's the piece that's missing usually is the recovery, but it's important. You know, if you think about weightlifting or, yep. or any kind of exercise, you have to have the recovery time. You can't just lift, oh, yeah. lift, 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 right? Absolutely. You got to sleep, you got to eat, you got to rest. All of those things are important. And with investing, I, I'll tell you when you, in the burnout, in the midst of it, when, when you're in it, you just think about, I, I just want to quit. What's this even worth? Why am yeah. I doing this? <laughs> I should just like ignorance is bliss. Why, why do I even want to continue? So I go through all of those thought processes and you have to go back and think about why you're doing it. What's the point in doing all this? Remembering even the people you do it for, but more so internally, like why it's a great time to reflect. And you may come to the point to the, the honest truth that maybe it's not for you. And that, that's also okay. There's a, a level of honesty you need to have with yourself. Uh, and what I did is I looked to my mentor. I said, Hey, this is what I'm experiencing. How can I get out of this? Am I thinking about this the wrong way? Am I doing too much? All of those things are important to consider when battling the burnout. Cause the burnout isn't just happening because you're in the space, right? There's something, there's a reason why you're burning out. And for me, I tend to burn out when I'm overwhelmed or feeling like, I'm just treading water and not swimming in a, in a particular direction. Yeah, man, you said a lot of uh, really good things in there uh, that resonate with me as well. And uh, a couple of things I think about are one, when I first got started, you know, I want to, I want to 
rule the world. You know, I want to make, <laughs> make all my dreams happen and I want it now. So I'm going to work as hard as I can to make it happen. And, and, you know, you think about that and a lot of experienced people who are successful and made it say, um, just don't give up tenacity and never giving up is the key to it. So I think when you're learning that and you're on fire for it, that's, that's easy to, uh, you know, for it to really make sense to you and, and for you to relate to it. And you're like, yeah, I'll never give up, but you're excited. When right. you get in this period where you're feeling the low point or the burnout point is when it's important for you to look at that and say, okay, now's the critical moment, right? Now's the, the point where I need to recover and give myself the space to do that, but, but don't give up or do what you said. I, I really like what you said about this is the second thing. Reevaluate, you know, be honest with yourself about was this the right thing? Is it still the right thing? And and maybe it is. You just need a little bit of recoup time. And in that case, do not give up. Keep going. That's where people who are successful are successful. They kept going. They didn't let it go. Uh, on the yeah. other hand, though, if you are honest with yourself during that evaluation, then be honest with yourself. If you need to pivot and make a change, then that's okay. That's That might be the time to do it. 100%. I would also say for me, I feel most burnt out when I store everything in my head, whether that's processes that I should be doing or things I need to do on a to-do list that seems to never end and something always gets added on just never feels like anything gets done because then i'll yeah. think about that that's constantly in the back of my mind i haven't done this i haven't done that and even if i get 10 things what i tend to think about is the negative of of oh i got 100 on my list i only did 10 today i failed so i think that is at least that's what my my narrative can be so pausing to to recognize what you've accomplished is also big. I tend to minimize my own achievements for whatever reason I'm working on that as a personal trait, but give yourself a pat on the back. If you're burnt out, then probably you've done something, but what is it that you've done? And look at that and be honest with yourself. If you should be proud that you've done it, but if you want more, that's okay. You can always achieve more, get more focused. I think that's probably a really, really big thing um, to, I don't think burnouts are avoidable. I think that they just, they'll happen with enough time in the space with enough time doing it. Um, because that's how we are, right. As, as humans, we fluctuate in moods and, and things of that nature. So you may be just caught in a down mood and come back up and then you may feel the burnout, but it's okay. That's my point is it, it happens and it is a way there's a way out of it. Yeah, I agree. I, li I also agree that life goes in cycles or seasons, if you will. Uh, so, you know, when, when you're in that season, um, using that time to really retrospect and, and think about what's right for you. And I really like what you said about recognizing your accomplishments and what you've done up to this point. Uh, I journal uh, and, and I keep, I keep some of them. And looking back at what my goals and aspirations were just a couple of years ago makes me realize how far I, I come. In fact, I'm pretty amazed because I legitimately have that feeling like, what have I really, how much progress have I really made? It just doesn't feel like that much. And you look back some of those journals from a couple of years ago, and it's pretty amazing how, how much one can accomplish in a couple of years. Absolutely. That can be and motivational. Yeah, yeah. you building upon your own momentum and seeing how much you've accomplished is going to make you feel good. And I think that that's, that's great. And if you don't hit all 100% of your goals, I don't, I mean, if you hit 90% going after your 100, that's still 90% more than where you were at before. Uh, yeah, I that's, that's man, a big thing. I'd even say 60 or 70%. So when I'm coaching my business clients for my day job, there's a thing we do, these, these flexible goals that we use called OKRs, objectives and key results. And they're stretch goals to get everyone aligned and focused on the most important thing that an organization should be focused on. And we 
we coach 60 to 70% on those stretch goals. If you set very aggressive, lofty, but motivating goals, not out of reach, but just out of reach. So they're motivational. Um, and you hit 60 or 70% of that, you're going to accomplish some amazing things. Absolutely. I was using 90. I don't know why, but yeah, maybe it's the whole conditioning of school. You get 90, you get an A. Yeah, right. You're absolutely <laughs> right. In the real world, it's, it, those, it's still amazing in that regard to hit 50, 60%. Because you, like you said, you've achieved 50% more than what you thought you were going to at the beginning or what you sought out for. And that that can be good too. There's not, a, an, I think, a singular answer to this. I would say know that it does come. And when it does happen, it's okay to to really experience it. Don't beat yourself up that you're going through it because you're just going to add uh, fuel to the fire. Getting out of it, I think for me, it's a, it's a combination of relaxing, reflecting on why I'm feeling this way, and then getting some guidance either through friends, through mentors, sometimes through books, rereading books or rewatching YouTube's YouTube videos or, or podcasts uh, that can help recenter me, if you will, in that. Uh, so we would love to hear your thoughts. Are, do you feel burnt out? And is there anything that we can do to help you? We'd love to do that. That's why we have the podcast to extend ourselves as a resource to you. So shoot us an email, techguysfrominvest at gmail.com. If you're listening to this, don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. Or if you are listening to this, the podcast, uh, leave us a review. Apple Podcasts, we want to increase our reach to like-minded individuals like yourself. So thank you, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful week. and. Peace out. Have a great week.